Hey there, this is Ryan Kingsling, founder of ZBrush Workshops and the brand new Creature Workshops.com. So in this video, in this series, I want to just share with you the things that I think are really cool about ZBrush for R2. And they're things that you wouldn't necessarily think to do. So one of the things that I think is really cool is how you do eyes or can do eyes in ZBrush for R2 using DynaMesh. So this model is just hanging out in DynaMesh and I'm gonna insert a sphere to put in an eyeball okay just insert it in press shift to constrain it get it the right size and there you go okay we can go into move push that back if we want to some deep set eyes and then don't forget to uh, calculate the position of that remember the eyeball is gonna sit a little higher up. Tuck it up inside, right? Let's tuck that up just a little bit inside there. Need to pull it out a little bit more. Okay. And in. All right. Control, click, and drag. But before I remesh this, I'm going to make sure DynaMesh group is on. Then control, click, and drag. That way everything is DynaMesh topology, but it's also separate. So I can still go in, select individual parts. All right, now here's the part that I think is kind of awesome. This is the part that's really wonderful to me, and that is when you come in here and you say select uh, curve tube. Now I've been modifying my curve tube left, right, and center, so let me make sure that the settings are on the way I want. In fact, let's not use curve tube. Let's use curve tube snap. That's the one that I want. And let's turn snap on so that it's snapping uh, to the surface. So what I'm going to do is just click and draw out what is for all intents and purposes a piece of clay. How cool is that? Now I'm going to edit this a little bit and you know usually when I'm in the flow I, I already have this set up. But I'm going to edit the size of the piece of clay and then make sure to push it back. So I'm going to turn bend off. I'm also going to turn snap off there. That's not behaving all that well. Just pull it back in space. Alright, and now bend can go back on. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Pull it out. Alright. I'm just messing with it. I don't need to go that far. But there it is. Pretty cool. Now watch this. It's The rest of it's still masked. I'm going to switch over to the move brush. Curve mode is accessible no matter what brush you have. It's a stroke setting. That's what it is. So what happens if I go in there and let's see, can I even use that curve that's still there? Can I use that curve to drive the move brush behavior. Well, let's just delete the curve and start over if you can't. Just pull another one out. Delete the curve. Okay. And then select it and start to pull it down. I'm going to turn uh, Accu Curve. Yeah, it's off. Okay, good. And notice how we're just able to really get a nice descent there. Yeah. Let's turn bend on and really pull that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Remesh, control click, delete that curve, and there you go. You have a nice little eyelid and it's a separate piece of geometry that you can go in and push and pull around. You can come in and set your auto masking mask by polygroup to 100 and then that gives you control to just select one part push and pull it around and make it work. So that's one of the things I think is kind of awesome about ZBrush 4 R2. Hope you enjoyed.